Good morning, my darlings. Have I ever started the vlog here before? I don't think so. What a treat. <laughs> Today, I just cannot get courgette pasta out of my brain. <laughs> I saw something on one of the platforms. I have no idea which one. Someone making a sausage courgette pasta. And while I'm not craving the sausage part of it, I am craving a creamy courgette pasta. So I have been thinking about this dish for the last 24 hours, so I'm going to be making myself a very, very early lunch today. Had my usual Monday morning bar and Pilates and then quick shop around Dalesford, picked up some cream, which is the ingredient that I didn't have in the house to make the recipe. And I have just picked my courgettes. I'm going to do a little green one and a little yellow one for maximum flavour. And that is my plan for right now. And then I really want to do a little bit of a summer kind of wardrobe clear out. It's one of those days where it's not glorious sunshine enough that I feel the urgent pull to be in the garden. Um, so I've been thinking that I would quite like to list a few more of my clothes on a rental website because apparently it's not just like the really fancy stuff that people like to rent out, it's kind of like premium high street, things that people might want to take away with them on holiday, and I have got so many things that it seems sad almost for them to be just sat in my wardrobe doing nothing when they could be being worn out and about by you guys and lots of other people too. So I think I'm gonna have a clear out with a charity shop bag, a bag of things to sell, and a bag of things that I'm gonna list on some rental websites. So if, they are live on such websites <laughs> by the time this video goes live. I'll leave them linked down below. But anyway, first of all, most importantly, let's go and make this creamy courgette, chili and garlic pasta. it feels very dark in this kitchen but never mind so I have just watched the I have just watched the reel it was on Instagram about four times and each time jotted down the instructions so I don't have to keep watching it every time I make it I've already made a few amends on here getting rid of the sausage and adding more flavor so I have got here well the recipe that she shared was for lots of people, I'm just making this for one person. So as you've just seen, I sliced up the yellow courgette. I'm actually not even going to bother doing the green one because I don't think I'm going to eat that, that much courgette. Then a clove of garlic. Mine is massive, so I might just use half a clove. One teaspoon of fennel seeds. We get ours from Steenberg's. Organic fennel seeds. Then I, I'm using half a teaspoon of chili flakes one sprig of rosemary, rosemary just to flavour the sauce which you pull out again. The recipe calls for double cream, they didn't have that at Dalesford so I'm going to use creme fraiche. I don't have a lemon but I will be adding in some parmesan as well. So first of all, I've cooked the pasta already, it's there, I've saved the cooking water. I'm going to heat up some oil in a frying pan and fry off my garlic, fennel seeds and chili flakes. Mm -hmm. So there we go my darlings, my creamy chilli and garlic pasta. I'm going to dig into this and I will let you know my thoughts. Okay my darlings, lunch update. That was so delicious. Very chilli-ish. I think our chilli flakes are particularly strong and I'm probably very garlicky right now but it was scrumptious. You may have seen in that little time lapse that I was also filming on my phone because I need to do better at short video content. So before I forget, because I very often have the best 
intention in the world and I film stuff on my phone and then I just do nothing with it. The amount of garden tutorial videos that I've got on my phone, which I've never edited and uploaded and now it's completely the wrong time of year, it's very silly. So I'm going to let that cuticle oil sink into my nails and I'm going to edit it and upload it right now and then we're going to crack on with a wardrobe organization. Okay, welcome to the area just outside my dressing room, which is in there. The first thing I need to tackle is this rail here. I don't think it'll be too hard, but this is the rail that doesn't really have a name. It's my new in rail, it's my yet to be categorized rail, it might be things which I'm returning, it might be things which I have just got on loan for a shoot or something like that, and this chunk here is actually just stuff from my suitcase um, from Sicily that I didn't put back in my wardrobe yet. So I think if I start by tackling this rail, then it'll give me that little dopamine boost that I need to tackle the rest of my wardrobe. Um, and then I'm just going to start laying out different piles probably of things which I'm going to sell, things which I'm going to donate to charity, and maybe I'll hang up ready to photograph bits which are going to be rented out. So, hmm, okay, wish me luck. I'm going to find a good podcast and start with my uncategorized rail. This is pretty good progress, that was not as awful a task as I had it in my head to be. And okay, so we have got a few things left on here. First of all, these really lovely leather trousers from Theory. I just don't know what to do because they still have from when I received them and I received them legally, <laughs> I should add. They still have the, um, what do you call it, security tag on them and I don't know how to get rid of it. So yeah, not sure what to do with those. I think maybe I'll have to take them to a local dry cleaner, see if they can take that off. So that's just an annoying anon an anomaly. Then we have got this beautiful sparkly dress, which was an option for the evening for the wedding. I think this could be a really good option for putting on the rental websites. So I'm gonna put this to the back dun 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 of the rail, it's got these gorgeous feathers down at the bottom, beautiful tassely sequins, um, but yeah, definitely the perfect thing, I think, for a rental website. Then we've got things like this. I just have so many broidery dresses in my wardrobe. I just don't think I need that many more. I think for things like this, what I might do is list them on some rental websites over summer, and then if at the end of summer they've not performed very well, then I might pack them away and sell them at the beginning of next summer. That seems like a sensible thing to do. So I'm gonna pop this back here for rentals as well. Same with this one. I've had it on this rail for a month now and it's still got the label in, so I haven't worn it out yet. Really lovely knitted dress. I'm not sure if this is the kind of thing that people would rent, but I'm just gonna stick everything up there for now and we shall see. And the same with this little two-piece. Really beautiful fabric, just something that I've not worn. So another thing to try out for rentals. Then we've got this lovely LK Bennett two-piece and I've worn this for a few photo shoots um, and I've worn it to a couple of lovely events, but Again, the great thing about these rental websites, and you'd think the way that I'm talking that this video is sponsored, <laughs> it is not. Um, the great thing about the websites is that they, these items just stay in my wardrobe, and it's only when someone rents them that I ship them off, so it doesn't really hurt to list that as well. Um, I thought I would try listing this little Abercrombie dress. Again, just not too sure on the price points that people are renting. So this is me just trialing some things out. This is a cute little top from And Other Stories. <sighs> well, I guess the fact that the label is still in it, obviously I've had it for over a month. Um, I have definitely put that on the wrong kind of coat hanger that's gonna destroy the arms. Let's pop it on one of these. 
that's a bit better. All of my coat hangers are from Amazon. I'll leave them linked down below. I guess as we start to get a bit more autumnal, I might pick this up from my wardrobe. So I think I will add this into my wardrobe. Then we've got this shirt dress from Reese. It's absolutely beautiful, but perhaps just a little bit too smart for the kind of occasions that I now attend. So I think that could be a really good rental option. The miscellaneous trousers and then a lovely pair of trousers, um, sorry, pair of pajamas, which actually I just need to take down to my bedroom because that is where they should live. Okay, we are off to a good start. I'm already getting distracted though. I have got a huge-ish pile of clothes on my door and they are actually things which I have not tried on yet. So they're on the rail, on the uncategorized rail because I don't know what I'm gonna do with them because I haven't tried them on yet. So I thought we could have a little try on session together. I realized that I did not have much makeup on and if you're gonna <laughs> stare at me for that long while I try stuff on, the least I can do is put on a tiny bit of makeup. Have this little delivery, very fun delivery from Revlon of their most Barbie core products, including this little uh, pink, eyeshadow palette. I am very jealous of anyone going to the Barbie premiere. I think it's, I think it might even have been last night. Um, just heard something about it on the radio, but I can't wait to go and watch it. I'm intrigued to see what they do. Ooh, are these creams? Oh no, it is powder. Love this shade here. I am a big fan of a pinky eye look. Oh, that's pretty. That is very pretty and very sparkly indeed. Um, yeah, I'm intrigued to go and see the film. I think when it comes out in the UK, I'm abroad, so I might even try and go to the cinema while we're away. Also from Revlon, Super Lustrous The Gloss. Let's give this a try. I'm surprised there's not a blusher in the collection, but, ooh. Oh my gosh, this, this literally smells and tastes like the kind of lip glosses I used when I was a little girl. Mm. That is so nostalgic. That's just like a proper shiny lip gloss. Ooh, I love it. Okay, I just wanted to do the tiniest little bit of makeup. Um, and now I'm gonna try on these bits and we can decide whether they're keepers, whether they're returners or sellers or rented outers. We shall see. So let's get trying. Okay, I'm getting started with this lovely white rotary dress from Forever New, which is a brand that in my opinion is having a very, very good season at the moment. I have got quite a few things from them in my wardrobe and everything I absolutely love. The pink dress that I wore for a recent blog photo shoot, my lovely yellow dress, which actually I think I might be trying on for you in a second. Um, I think I have tried it on before, but not on camera. So I'll show that to you in a second. I think I've got the lining a little bit twizzled. <laughs> yes, I have. Oh dear. Oh my goodness me. There we go. Um, but yes, they are an Australian designer. I was actually discussing Forever New with a couple that we met in Sicily who currently run the brand Dish, whose pieces are absolutely gorgeous. Um, the lovely lady kind of inherited the brand from her mum and is now running it. And we were talking about how fantastic Australian designers are, obviously Zimmerman, Dish, and Forever New. Um, and yes, I think Forever New price point is probably the most affordable of all of those brands. This is just a very typical, easy to wear summer dress. Perfect for those days when you want to go out and look really summery, but maybe the temperatures are not quite warm enough for less fabric. So you've got long sleeve, really beautiful broidery fabric. I mean, it's the kind of thing that I just love to wear, so definitely gonna be keeping this. Might even wear this for a work day event that I've got coming up in two days time. Probably in the next vlog, should be a fun day out. Yeah, I think this is what I'm going to wear because it is the middle of summer, it is July, and yet it's not that warm at the moment. One of my followers from Canada just messaged me saying that they're having a mega heat wave and it's meant to be coming in our direction, so I hope that is true. It'll probably be the heat wave when Charlie and I are next abroad. That would be just our luck, but here's hoping. And in the meantime, this is fabulous and definitely staying in my wardrobe. 
Okay, my darlings, in my last video, I showed you the most beautiful kind of mustardy golden colored dress from Hobbs. And I said that it was perfect for those days when maybe you're ready to embrace autumnal colors, autumnal silhouettes, like long sleeve, but you're not quite ready to stop wearing dresses because like when you have to first start wearing closed toe shoes again after summer, it takes me a while to ease into it. And I feel that this dress gives similar vibes. It's covering up enough and it's warm enough for those very late summer and early autumn days. And yet it's still a dress. It's still beautiful. It is Zimmerman. <laughs> so price point wise, a little bit higher. But I mean, look at this detail. Look at these sleeves. That is just sensational, isn't it? I don't know if it is going to be a very high price per wear item. That is something that I do like to consider. And I can't help but feel a little bit biblical. <laughs> I think because of the very high neck, it's giving, it's giving Vicar of Dibley a little bit. Do you know what, I'm just, I'm not 100% sold on this. So I don't think this is a keeper. It's lovely and I adore it. But if I'm thinking about price per wear, it's not one that I'm gonna get a ton of use out of. So as lovely as it is, it's gonna go in the return pile. Well, this has to be one of the most comfortable dresses I have tried on in a very long time. This is brand new. I just received this from And Other Stories. I will leave all of these bits linked down below so you can shop them super easily, should your heart desire. But already I know that next time I go for my Pilates and I need to put something in my gym bag to get changed into afterwards, I already know that this is going to be that outfit because this material, I mean, it's literally fresh out of the post bag and yes, it's got a couple of creases on it, but because the pattern is so bold, you actually can't see any of the creases, which is fantastic. Not that my stuff majorly creases when I take it to the gym, but it does a little bit. So yeah, this is gonna be fantastic for that. It has got this bow detail at the back. So you literally just kind of tie yourself in which gives the waistband a really, really nice fit. It feels a little bit kind of boho with the very light fabric on the sleeves. You've got a little bit of an elasticated cuff here, so you can pull it all the way down, or you could even create a much shorter sleeve effect. Really pretty. Just a really nice lightweight fabric. I'd love to know if they've got this in different colors. I love the blue, but if they do a greeny version, a pinky version, I think it'll be really, really pretty. Gorgeous summer dress. Potentially a good one if you're able to wear slightly more relaxed things at work. Um, but for me, for just social things, I could wear this for a day into London. Again, the event that I've got coming up this week. Yes, definitely the kind of thing that I will get a lot of wear out of. And not a bad price point as well. And other stories, high street price point, for a really beautiful dress. So we have got another keeper. So my darlings, up next we have got another little number from Zimmerman. This is very short for me. <laughs> I'm not used to such aeration going on in this area. I've popped on with my little usual heels. We have got the same elasticated detail on the sleeves here. So if you want to have it long sleeve, you can. Feels It feels very American road trip. <laughs> That is the vibe that this is giving me. Or Australian, no, someone that lives in a hot climate, but that's ready for autumnal colors. That, <laughs> that's the vibe that I'm getting from this. I really like the details. It's got this really sweet, try not to flash you, little crochet detail on the edges. Cute little kind of mini square neckline, which is adding to that kind of, are you allowed to say country bumpkin? Because it's kind of giving that, that kind of vibe, um, <laughs> slight, slight kind of patchwork, a little bit folklore-y. I do really like it, but I'm not sure that it's something that I will get, again, a lot of use out of. So let me know your opinions on this down below. I think if it was high street price, I'd be very, very tempted to keep this because it is gorgeous. But the fact that it's Zimmerman, I know it's not gonna be high street price, so a serious decision must be made. So let me know your thoughts down below. 
So up next we have got an ultra timeless piece from Bamford, which is obviously I walk through the Bamford boutique every time I go to any of my fitness classes. So I'm just constantly tempted by their gorgeous wares. And this was very kindly sent over by the Bamford team. It is the most beautiful, simple, elegant white dress with some really lovely but simple design details. So we've got do 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 somewhere we have got little pockets which is fabulous and we have got this kind of raw it's as though it's been turned inside out this raw hem which is a really beautiful design detail other than that it's just almost like a tunic as a dress down at the bottom you can see it really shows the most beautiful kind of pattern and silhouette very simple very wimbledon oh, i'm just manifesting going to wimbledon but alas, I think it is absolutely gorgeous, very simple, very easy to wear. Just throw on some beautiful, timeless accessories and you have got yourself an absolutely elegant and ageless summer outfit. Definitely a keeper, perfect for any upcoming holidays. Gosh, this is a very dark colour for me, but I think that this navy dress has just got something very, very timeless and elegant about it. It is another Bamford piece, but I think I'm going to see if I can swap all of these pieces for one size down, because it still feels a little bit roomy. You've got this lovely ruffle detail around the neckline, beautiful silhouette, little kind of straight across the bust section here which gives it a really beautiful silhouette and then you've got that same almost raw edge hem detail here which is obviously something that they're doing across the collection really really like that finish almost a sea of sucker kind of material and a very very elegant length so yeah love these pieces but i think i need to get them just one size down I am very much doing these in no particular order. The next item that was on my rail is this beautiful pink dress from And Other Stories. It's got a very unusual back detail. It's one that you really don't want to untangle yourself because I'm not sure that I would know how to put it back together. But when you get yourself into it, it's just a case of doing a bow. So luckily, not too hard to get into. This would be perfect if you have a special event on a really hot day or a fabulous holiday dress. I think the colour is perfect for holidays. I love a, um, a halter neck. I think it's perfect for holidays and special occasions. And if you... Uh, do you know what? If I do go to a Barbie <laughs> cinema screening, then this is what I'm going to wear because it's perfect. I think I got this at least like six weeks ago and I just completely forgot about it to be honest. So I'm not sure if it's still going to be on the website. Fingers crossed. If it is, it'll be linked down below. Well, this is just absolutely sensational. This is a beautiful dress from a brand called Agua Bendita. I believe it's Colombian. It is just the most beautiful dress. You might remember I showed you this before going to Sicily. I didn't end up taking it with me just because it's very heavy and my suitcase was already full, but it is it would have been perfect for Sicily. It is the most fantastic summer holiday dress, summer special occasion. I are these little pine no they're not pineapples they're little flowers but something about this is very much giving me holiday vibes palm beach palm springs oh i'd love to do a usa trip at some point this year it is a mega halter neck so you have got a big open back detail which i know not everybody loves it's a little bit restrict restrictive with bras personally i don't mind because no boobs so that's perfect for me and then silhouette wise just tight on the bodice very uh what's the word cutting down here so might be a little bit of side boob if you have boob and there might be a little bit of the side of it on reveal here but yeah really beautiful lovely fabric just need somewhere fabulous to wear this now I actually don't know how Zimmerman do it. <laughs> just so many beautiful designs. This is another dress from them. It has just got so many gorgeous design details. This fabric, the pattern, it's like 
a, a mustardy golden dahlia pattern. Got a little bit of metallic running through here. The covered buttons, but very importantly, thankfully, a zip at the back, so it doesn't take me 10 years to get in and out of the dress. Beautiful ruffles here, and then you've got like an inner section of the dress too, so you're not revealing any side view there. Again, a slightly biblical collar, and again, I'm not 100% sure where I would wear this if I had some really special events as we were coming into autumn, but is it too early to start planning outfits like this? I'm not sure because I know as soon as this, the time comes, I probably won't be able to find things like this. I think of all the Zimmermans, this one is my favourite, and I'd probably style it with a nice leather belt. Um, it's very billowy, very beautiful. It is absolutely gorgeous. And I'm sure I will have some really lovely work events in early autumn that I want to wear a nice dress to, but want to give a nod to autumnal colourways. So, hmm, I think this is definitely my favourite one. Let me know what you think. And without further ado, I'm going to get back into my me and M dress that I was wearing at the beginning of um, today. And let's move on with the wardrobe organisation. Sorry if the camera light is flickering, it suddenly got very dark outside, it is the craziest June ever. But next I'm going to rummage through this rail here, which is probably my most fun rail. It contains so many of my favourite summer dresses, and I am going to pull out the ones which I'm going to photograph to list on the rental websites. So yeah, as I said, this is just my first time doing something on this scale, um, so it's going to be a real trial and error, but if there are any items in here which you don't see me pull out, which you would love to rent, then please let me know down below. And I'm going to get back to the YouTube video, video that I'm watching, which is some nutrition video. Oh, that is the reel that I posted about my lunch today. Um, and I'm going to start pulling some things together. first set of grabbing items that I'm going to rent out. I'm thinking I'm probably not going to do all white dresses just because obviously if I rent something out I want it to come back in perfect condition. I don't know renting etiquette. Do you have to wash something before you return it? I hope so but I think my steam cupboard will come in very handy. I'll steam things before and after renting but I just have so many gorgeous dresses like this Zimmerman one for example and I would just it would fill me with joy to know that someone had the most amazing evening on their holiday and felt fabulous wearing this instead of it just being sat in my wardrobe all summer except when I want to wear it, so lots of really fun Zimmerman pieces. And then, again, someone might have a special event and want to wear something Erdem, but not want to invest the full price in something of this kind of price category, but renting it is far more affordable. Something which I've had for a couple of years now, this Zimmerman dress, I love it. I love the fact that these things aren't leaving my house. If I want to wear them, they're still in my wardrobe. If someone wants to rent them, then perfect. And then some slightly more kind of dramatic dresses. This one, I think it's Leo Lin uh, by Melina with the beautiful cutout detail down at the bottom. I'll see if I can rummage through my Instagram and find photos of me wearing them so that you can see what they look like on. This would be a gorgeous mid to late summer wedding guest outfit. I imagine that's going to be quite a popular reason for renting. But then even like elevated beach wear, something like this from Heidi Klein, you might want to rent for a summer holiday. Um, Vince, this is a really beautiful dress, great for very special work events in autumn, or again, a cooler summer wedding guest dress. Quite expensive, um, so again, perfect thing to rent. Then I thought I would try out a few premium high street bits like LK Bennett, again, fantastic for events or for work. Um, a special work event, little, this is probably as white as I will rent out, little Zimmerman skirt which is fabulous, got that in Palm Beach. This is a gorgeous holiday dress from Envelope, it always reminds me of the Maldives, absolutely love it. This is a 
gorgeous. I think it's Reformation. No, I don't think it is actually. Mara Hoffman. This is a gorgeous thing to wear on holiday. It is so flattering. So that would be a great one. Um, another beautiful, very striking dress from By Melina. Something like this is very striking. So if you do wear it to a wedding, renting is a great option. If you don't want to be outfit repeating, not that there is anything wrong with outfit repeating. This little green Zimmerman number doesn't look anything on the hanger, but it looks fabulous in real life. I have got this white dress. Um, this does clean very well, it's Serafina. This is fantastic if you're visiting somewhere and you need to dress modestly. I wore this around the Grand Mosque in Oman, it was perfect for that. And another really wonderful number from Holiday by Everay. I think I shot this in Palm Beach as well. Great one to take with you in a suitcase because it's super light and the creases just drop out. So, oh, I'm gonna start with this batch and then go back around too. goodness weather wise it has turned into the most dreary afternoon we're all feeling very low energy in the house today but I feel like this has been quite productive so I have pulled out um, one of the bags that was in the wardrobe of things which I had stored away from last summer got a whole bag there of bits which I'm going to sell I'll leave the page where you can buy my secondhand pieces linked down below and then these are some lovely bits which I'm going to pop on the rental website gonna give everything a nice steam so we've got um, some sleeper dresses this one always reminds me of when Freddie and I were in Savannah Georgia on our US trip was that last year oh, that was so much fun Do you know I'm desperate to go to Nantucket that is where I am hoping to go on my next US road trip with Freddie. Let's make it happen. And then we've got this lovely white number from Marge. Looks a little bit discolored. Maybe I need to get some vanish on it. One of these beautiful H&M dresses, which was very hard to get your hands on actually. It sold out really quickly. Absolutely beautiful, can't wait to wear that again. A couple of strapless Zimmerman pieces, a play suit, that one there. And this one is a dress with this lovely floral pattern at the bottom. It's great if, like me, you don't want to get any tan lines because they're both strapless. So I'll be renting those out. This little Zimmerman uh, cropped blouse. And then this is a dress from Lug von Sieger. Really, really pretty dress. So there we go. A few little bits there. Next, I'm going to have a look at handbags. And then, to be honest... I think that might be my energy on this um, activity for the day, completely exhausted. Gosh, what a loot. I think this is the summary of the bags that I'm going to rent out on the various websites. So we've got everything from a few different straw bags, the Chloe Marcy, we've got one of the traditional Loewe bags, and then a more unusual straw kind of bag, my Givenchy tote, such a good size for traveling with. Um, a few little rogue options, we've got this Prada rucksack, again fantastic for holidays when you're traveling, going on little day trips. One of my first designer bags, a Gucci Dionysus. I don't know what the rental market's gonna be like for older style bags like that, but you never know, the trends might come around again. And then up here, oops, we have got everything from Prada Cartier. I thought I would do my Louis Vuitton Pochette Matisse. Some very seasonal bags like this little fluffy shearling Chloe and the shearling YSL. 
got another Chloe bag. Um, I don't know if Aspinall will rent out well, but we'll give it a try. Sparkly Mulberry, Sparkly Holland Cooper, Prada basket bag. I think Freddie will be borrowing this from me again before too long, I'm sure. Then we've got a few of my Vanina bags. This is what Lila carried with her on our wedding day. This is a holiday favorite of mine. Oops, there goes the Prada. Chloe bag, um, another Mulberry with a pearl, a very practical bag indeed. So yes, there we go. And of course, out here we have got my Dior book tote, which I will also be renting out. So I'm intrigued to see which ones get the most requests. My darlings, it is the following morning. It is Tuesday. I am still in my gym gear following a very good session with Simon because I am heading for my first ever... Oh, I wish I could put the steering wheel down when I talk to you, but I don't know how... Sorry. Um, I've got my first ever paddle experience today. So um, at Bamford Club slash my gym, there are a couple of paddle courts and I have been wanting to try it because apparently it's similar to tennis but easier and I am not naturally the most coordinated of people. I'm not very sporty. I love a good gym session and Pilates but I'm not, I'm not a sporty girl. So <laughs> tennis was never my forte nor were any sports to be honest but I do really like the look of paddle and I'm hoping that I'm going to love it. So heading for my first ever class this morning with Petra we've got a one-on-one -on -one session with Jack so that's going to be really good fun I hope. So I'm meeting Petra at Dalesford and we're going to have our first little class together. If I can I will film a few snippets it might be quite entertaining oh my gosh oh last night we had the most insane wind and a massive branch fell down from this tree and can you see it's actually taken the top off this sty and we are not battling but persuading the neighbors that the sty does not need to be replaced because they want to replace it with a modern one like a metal one um but yes there's half of it over there and the other half of it just broken over here so hopefully we can fix it before the neighbors come and replace it with a metal one anyway without further ado let's get to bamford and try out paddle shift <laughs> Thank you. 
made it back home. I had a nice breakfast in um, the leg bar, it's called, afterwards with pea so that we could um, di digest, decompress, and discuss our first experience of paddle. It was an hour's lesson with Jack, and he was a fantastic teacher. It was great fun. We learned a few of the skills uh, from the back. So basically, paddle. Imagine. A tennis court bearing in mind I don't know that much about tennis like I enjoy Wimbledon as much as the next person but I'm not a tennis pro by any stretch he did actually say that sometimes it can be beneficial if you've not played tennis before because then you're not like automatically doing tennis moves um, so it's imagine a tennis court with the net in the middle two players four players but paddle has got like glass kind of plastic glass around the edges of the court a little bit like a badminton court kind of so the ball doesn't go flying here there and everywhere if you miss a shot or if you overshoot something which is great um the scoring system is the same as tennis the bats as you saw are smaller they're very lightweight hold it in the same way as a tennis racket forward backhand um, and I think pretty much the rules are quite similar we didn't really talk too much about the rules of the game so I need to we need to do that next time. Petra and I are going to try and do weekly lessons, diary permittent. I think it could be really, really good fun and something that we might be able to do with the boys as well. Um, I can imagine George and Charlie really enjoying it too. So yeah, we did a few drills, like practicing, because Petra, like me, has probably played tennis, played tennis like five times in her life, same as me, so we were both very much even skill level. Um, so we practiced some like normal shots, how to hold the racket properly, the right kind of pressure the right even just the right angle of holding the racket it was those kinds of skills which you need someone to help you with especially in the early days so yeah I think we'll definitely continue with a few lessons um, and then I think paddle is you know you can play it when you're on holiday apparently it's really big in Spain apparently quite big in Miami it seems like quite a fun social thing to do and if you happen to live locally but you're not a member of the Bamford Club you can go on an app I believe it's called Matchy m-a-t-c-h-i and you can book yourself in to play paddle there even if you're not a member at Bamford so give it a go maybe I'll see some of you on the court soon but yeah good fun thank you Petra for um, inviting me along for that class with you and I hope that it could become a new hobby because I'm not I'm not really that competitive but I do like um, fitnessy things and it was a good balance between like a bit of social a bit of a bit of high intensity like a lot of running as you might have seen so very good fun and then i dropped petra off home checked in on her vegetables she's growing beans she's growing courgettes and pumpkins so very exciting it is very rewarding when you start to get into that and her beans are doing much better than mine i haven't harvested any of my beans yet so very jealous of petra's beans so there we go not sure what i'm going to do this afternoon i think um it's quite gray so i might just do some more admin editing and the like and um, do some listing of my clothes on these rental websites. Hello again, my darlings, back in the kitchen. I feel like all of my recent vlogs have had some form of cooking experiment section. Today, I'm going to try for the first time, so enjoy watching this process, but I'm not guaranteeing it's gonna be successful. I'm gonna try out for the first time making homemade nut bars. I love nuts and we had we had a delivery this morning from what's the website that i used buy whole foods online i think one of you guys let me know about the website a little while ago i forgot about it but i then remembered it <laughs> so did a big order on like nuts hazelnuts brazil nuts almonds Ocado is always sold out of almonds very strange um my favorites pistachio so i am now well stocked up and I'm gonna try making nut bars. I found a recipe that I'm gonna base mine on online from a website called Downshiftology. So they have got some approximate uh, weights of things that you need. I think the only things that you like need need, because you can essentially raid your cupboard and use whatever nuts and seeds you've got, the more variety the better for your gut and for the flavor. You do need maple syrup because this is going to bind everything together. So I've got a Waitrose Dutchy Organic Canadian maple syrup. I think it's nice to have something a bit crunchy and a bit gooey in there. So I've got some cranberries. 
I have got some more in the cupboard. And I've also, oh, more cranberries. And then I've also got some goji berries because I love goji berries. I was thinking about adding a few chocolate chips, but now that I'm thinking about it, I'm not too sure. So I'm gonna start by measuring out my nuts <laughs> um, and then mixing together maple syrup and what is it? Vanilla extract, which will hopefully make them super yummy. And then you pour that over the top of a baking tray full of nuts, which are mixed. Salt makes it yummier. And then you stick it in the oven for 30 to 35 minutes. So let's give it a go. First step on the Thermomix, I'm gonna measure out 300 grams of a variety of nuts and seeds. I'm gonna start with a handful of each and see how we do weight-wise, starting with some almonds. Pistachio. Mm. Yummy. Hazelnuts. Walnuts, and these are still the ones from our garden. I've got this fabulous jar of mixed seeds. I think that will do really well in there. And then I'm gonna do some cashews. Right, that's 285 grams. I'm just gonna do a small handful more of almonds. Okay. So this recipe calls for 30 grams of dried cranberries. I'm gonna start by adding in goji berries because I feel like they're very similar. Maybe do half and half. So 14 grams of goji berries. Let's just stick these all in. Perfect. 15 grams of sunflower seeds. Perfect. A tablespoon of chia seeds, roughly, and a pinch of sea salt. Now I'm actually not using the sun mixed blend, I was just using it as weighing scales. So I'm going to tip these into a bowl ready to add the maple syrup. Right, so I've put a jug on top of the thumb mix and I set the scales down to zero and I'm going to add in 80 grams of maple syrup. Whoa. There we go. Whoops. I am adding a teaspoon-ish of vanilla. Lovely. Mix that all up. And pouring onto my nuts. perfect amount to fill one of my little um, enamel trays. I'm now going to pop this lovely looking mixture into the oven for 30 to 35 minutes, 180 degrees. And then the most important thing is that I remember to, or I restrain myself and let it cool for at least an hour before cutting into little bars. Good luck, my friend. Well, after a rainy afternoon, blue skies are coming. It's rather glorious down here now and after a rainy sunny day the garden always needs a little bit of maintenance. I'm going to pick some cut flowers to take into the house, take some over to La Luz and as always some of the roses need deadheading. It is relentless. couple of little delicate displays from this afternoon just as an aeroplane goes overhead and I just said to Charlie if our village flowers this weekend this is the sweet pea that I would be entering and winning the village competition with no doubt perfectly straight stem three blooms at the top and look at that beautiful dual color once again I got the uh, seeds I bought them probably this time last year actually from Roger Parsons on Instagram. I'll leave his account link down below. I think he's just a sweet 
old chap who has a fabulous passion and expertise in sweet peas. Okay, the flowers are in from the garden and the nut bar is out of the oven. It's gone quite dark. And as you can see, I couldn't resist. I had to have a corner of it and taste it. And oh my gosh, it tastes way yummier than I was expecting. It is absolutely delicious. It's actually only been out of the oven for 35 minutes. And I know I said the hardest thing is to wait, but I am just gonna cut the rest of this off and just try a little bit more. You know, you have to try it to make sure it's okay. Oh, it's delicious. I think, I think if you wanted it to be healthier, you could do less maple syrup, but I don't feel like there was even that much. But yeah, it is absolutely scrumptious. My first homemade nut bar. Yummy. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay, my darlings, this is very serious business. This is the information about our village show. <laughs> and do you remember when we went last year? It's actually where we met Chloe, which is lovely. Um, and this year, I would like to enter quite a few of the categories. At the moment, we may not be here because we might actually be in Ibiza because it is when it's on the same day as the Ottolenghi dinner at Atsaro, which we've already got tickets to. We haven't booked flights or hotels yet though, so that's why I say maybe. But this here is the schedule. So these are the different disciplines that you can enter and I thought I would go through and put a little mark by the ones that I'm going to enter. If I'm not here, then Lala can take the items on my behalf. So, within fruit and vegetables, obviously um, you can enter as many as you want, but you don't want to spread yourself too thin, so you've got to be a little bit tactical. I remember last year, um, the vegetables were quite impressive. So you can enter a collection of vegetables, six peas, six runner beans, six dwarf beans, potatoes, white or coloured, garlic times three, trimmed, onions times five as grown, shallots times six, carrots times, I'm not going to read them all. Um, so I think to be honest, I'm going to mark tomatoes here because it's number 17, which is my lucky number. And I'm going to mark courgettes. I think my courgettes might be winner winner chicken dinners. Longest runner bean, that's quite fun. I'll put an asterisk by it in case I've got a long one. Okay, flowers. This is where I think I might just steal the show. Um, so, container of cut flowers, no less than four outdoor varieties. That, genuinely think I might win that one. Container of sweet peas, definitely, strong chance. Vase of asters, mm, let someone else have that one. Vase of single flowered roses, three stems, one or more varieties, yep, we'll do that one. Um, a scented rose, yep. I literally bought one into the house. This one here, I bought this into the house just now because it smells, oh my goodness me, so sensational. Okay, so, and a single flowered rose. I think I'll enter that one as well. Um, any flower, one single bloom. That's probably quite likely as well. Vase of herbaceous perennials, no less than three varieties. Yet we can do that. Um, oh, three decorative dahlias, yep. Five pom-pom dahlias, might be able to do that. Oh gosh, bottle of homemade wine, homemade liqueur, homemade cider. Wow, oh my gosh, there are, there are so many different categories for honey. <gasps> I think this is new. The exhibitor must have produced all exhibits. What does that mean? Oh, they must have produced it at home. One jar of set honey, one jar of clear honey, novice category <laughs> two jars of clear honey six jars of honey labeled as for sale not novice obviously that's more of a pro two beeswax candles matching piece of beeswax block honey cake to own recipe Me recipe must be displayed one other hive product containing honey wow's a trouser oh my gosh there's more preserves strawberry jam raspberry jam fruit tarts shortbread biscuits Whoever comes up with this list of requirements must just be so fun. Floral art, no artificial plant material can be used. I remember that was quite good last year. 
they were pretty high caliber entries exactly the cake for this year is carrot and orange cake and lemon and lime drizzle i won't be entering those because i'm just not very skilled in that area please insert the number of entries alongside the corresponding entries hey well i've marked a few and I'm feeling optimistic, so I kind of hope we are here because that'll be a very wholesome day. But whether we're here or not, I will be entering a lot of... Oh, I got seeds in my teeth, probably. I will be entering a lot of our garden produce into the village show. What do you think of that, Lexi? Oh, lovely. <laughs>